Think of the coldest night you've ever experienced. Now, imagine being caught in a howling, bone-chilling blizzard with nothing but a rough hide for a cloak, your fingers numb and clumsy and just ahead, an enemy waiting to strike with axes sharp enough to split a wooden shield like paper. That was life for a Viking warrior. But here's the catch. They didn't have modern steel factories or fancy machinery. Instead, they took something you might have stepped on barefoot at the beach and turned it into the deadliest weapons of their time. So, how did Viking blacksmiths transform ordinary beach sand into lethal battle axes that could cleave armor and bone alike? Buckle up, because this might be the strangest Viking survival trick you've never heard of. It sounds like the punchline to a Viking joke. Why did the blacksmith go to the beach? But the answer was serious business. The Viking secret wasn't just brute strength or savage tactics. It was chemistry, geology, and a fierce understanding of nature's materials that would make today's metallurgists raise their eyebrows. Picture this, a bunch of sweaty Viking smiths surrounded by roaring fires burning hotter than your average backyard barbecue, hammering away at lumps of metal forged from the very sand that had soaked their boots on countless raids. No, they weren't just melting down driftwood ash. These were carefully curated mineral-rich sands, infused with the magic of iron and carbon compounds. This might be the strangest Viking survival trick, because you wouldn't expect beach sand, those tiny, harmless grains that slip through your fingers, to be the backbone of weapons that shaped history. But the Vikings had a special nest of knowledge. The sand they selected wasn't just any sand. It contained a high percentage of iron-rich minerals, specifically magnetite and hematite, which when extracted and smelted, yielded a surprisingly pure and hard form of iron. Imagine a medieval version of a 1,000-watt heater, except this heater is the fiery forge core where raw ore and sand were smushed, melted, and hammered into the unmistakable curved blades that have terrified enemies for centuries. Here's how it worked. The Vikings first collected sand from ancient volcanic beaches, where the minerals were unusually rich in iron content, sometimes as high as 15-20%. Unlike the soft, quartz-dominated sands of most beaches, these sands were literally loaded with tiny black chunks of iron oxide, which, when exposed to intense heat, imagine smelting temperatures of around 1,200 degrees Celsius, could be separated and turned into workable iron. This process, called bloomery smelting, involved heating the sand with charcoal in a clay furnace for hours, sometimes an entire day until the metal ore began to coalesce into a solid, spongy mass called a bloom. The bloom then had to be hammered repeatedly, squeezing out impurities and compacting the iron into denser, tougher metal. It's basically the ancient version of pressing a sponge until it turns into a solid brick. And get this, the result was iron strong enough to form the heart of battle axes, swords, and spearheads. While modern metallurgy uses electric arc furnaces and precise chemical controls, Viking blacksmithing was all about reading the materials and adjusting on the fly. Their forges were basically nature's versions of Gore-Tex jackets, cleverly regulating heat and airflow to control the chemical reactions inside the ovens. Their charcoal, carefully made from birch and oak, provided the perfect carbon levels, roughly 0.6 to 0.8% carbon, to create steel rather than brittle iron. Too little carbon, and the weapon would bend or dent, too much, and it would snap. The smiths mastered this balance without thermometers or calculators, relying on molten lava red glows and the rhythm of hammer strikes. It was alchemy danced by hand and eye. And why did they go through all this trouble, starting from beach sand? Because pure iron and steel forged from imported ore was a costly and scarce commodity during the Viking Age. They lived on the edges of harsh, ice-bound worlds and needed weapons that were not just effective, but could be made with locally sourced materials. Using beach sand was not just innovative, it was essential survival economics. Imagine being a Viking warrior in frigid Scandinavia, and your very weapon's life depends on the correct mineral grains scooped off a beach while waves crash nearby like ancient drums of war. It's like turning your morning coffee grounds into rocket fuel, unexpected but brilliant. But it didn't stop there. Once the metal was forged, the Vikings used a fascinating technique called pattern welding. Imagine ancient bubble wrap or Kevlar layering. Pattern welding combined layers of iron and steel, 
folded and twisted to create blades that were both flexible and incredibly durable. Each fold worked like nature's version of protective layering in high-tech outdoor gear, absorbing shocks without breaking. The fine, swirled patterns on Viking axes weren't just for show, they were. The fingerprints of a smith who knew their army's survival depended on blades that could take a hit, resist chipping, and still slice through a rival's armor. This craftsmanship was vital because, unlike later mass-produced weapons, every Viking axe was a personal statement and a trust in the blacksmith's hands to get a sense of just how tough these weapons were. Imagine a winter night on a northern battlefield with temperatures plummeting to minus 30 degrees F. Metal tends to become brittle at such cold, but thanks to their smelting and layering, Viking axes retained a level of resilience modern cold weather steel hardens envy. Their blades could be sharpened to a razor edge, yet warped less in cold than common iron products. This technological edge wasn't luck. It resulted from generations of trial, error, and understanding beach sand's unique chemical properties. But even with the best smelting and welding, shaping the axe was a monstrous task. Envision forging a weapon of war. A glowing orange hot lump hammered rhythmically over an anvil, sparks flying like a fireworks show. The blacksmith's face glistening with sweat, muscles tense as the hammer strikes the pounded steel's rhythm. Vikings believed the blacksmith was as close to a sorcerer as a man could. B. Controlling fire, metal and earth secrets to produce a weapon infused not just with iron or carbon, but with the spirit of survival itself. This ritual of forging wasn't just manufacturing, it was personal, almost sacred, ensuring every beam and blade had the strength to bring victory and protect a clan. Then came the handle, never an afterthought. The Vikings sourced hardy woods like ash and oak, choosing grains that could absorb shock, balance the weapon's weight and flex, just the right amount to prevent the axe from snapping or slipping in a brutal fight. In fact, the handle's resilience was as crucial as the blade's sharpness, acting like nature's version of ancient shock absorbers, allowing warriors to swing with precision and strength without losing control. And that's not all. The handle was often bound with leather strips soaked in animal fats. This ancient trick acted like an early version of water repellents, making the wood weatherproof against cold rain, frost, and salt spray. So from beach sand to a forged blade, layered like ancient armor, and finished with handles treated to survive storms and battles, Viking blacksmiths didn't just build weapons, they crafted survival tools honed by their environment's brutal demands. But how exactly did the transformation from sand to steel happen on the chemical level? And what kind of experiments have modern scientists done to unwrap these secrets lost for centuries? Stick around, because we're just getting to the fiery heart of Viking metallurgy. And you won't believe the discoveries that bring this ancient craft back to life under the microscope. But here's the kicker. Smelting iron from beach sand wasn't just about fire and hammer. It was about mastering chemistry that even today's scientists find baffling. When the Vikings heated the iron-rich sand alongside charcoal inside their clay bloomery furnaces, reaching scorching temperatures near 1,000, 200 degrees Celsius, a remarkable transformation began. The intense heat triggered a chemical reaction known as reduction, where oxygen is stripped from iron oxides like magnetite and hematite. What's left behind? Pure iron in a spongy chunk called a bloom, mixed with tiny pockets of slag, essentially impurities like glassy bits and leftover silicates. This process is like roasting a batch of coffee beans, except instead of coffee, you get a lump of nearly pure iron. The key was precise control. Too cool and the iron wouldn't separate. Too hot and you'd burn away precious carbon, turning the metal brittle or soft. Think of it as the Viking's version of baking the perfect loaf. Temperature and timing were everything. And those ancient smiths couldn't just glance at a temperature gauge. They felt it, heard it in the hiss of the flames, and saw it in the color of glowing sands. But all that warmth would vanish if the bloom was left unrefined. After pulling the bloom from the forge, Viking smiths set to work like medieval mechanics. Hammering the bloom was no gentle tap. It was an intense first stage of purification. Imagine squeezing a sponge filled with rusty water. Each strike expelled impurities, forcing slag out and compressing the iron's fibers into a solid mass. This wasn't just about shaping metal. It was refining it into a weapon-ready steel. 
The pounding also heated the metal to keep it malleable, around 800 minus 900 degrees Celsius, and the rhythm of hammer blows was like a heartbeat sinking smith and metal. This process, done over many hours, turned soft iron into an alloy tough enough to survive clashes on icy battlefields. It's close to what modern blacksmiths call forging and welding by hammer, but Vikings did it without power hammers or gas furnaces. Just muscle, instinct, and generations of hard-won knowledge embedded in the pattern of every strike. Now, the Vikings didn't stop at making a block of steel. They took it to the next level with pattern welding. Picture an ancient medieval version of bubble wrap or Kevlar layering, where blacksmiths layered strips of iron and high carbon steel, folded them multiple times, twisted, and welded them into a single blade. This layering served a purpose beyond aesthetics. It was armor for the metal itself, distributing shock and preventing the blade from becoming brittle or shattering. Modern metallurgists call this technique composite layering, and it's still used in some advanced engineering applications. For Vikings, this meant axes that could flex in a brutal strike, absorb impact like a shock absorber, and spring back quick enough for a follow-up blow. The swirling, wood grain patterns we see etched on surviving Viking blades today are like fingerprints, telling the story of each blacksmith's skill and the weapon's birthright. Without this intricate crafting method, axes would have snapped as easily as a brittle twig in a winter storm. And it didn't stop there. Ancient forge masters knew temperature control was king. Their charcoal fires fed by birch and oak reached around 1,000, 100 to 1,000, 200 degrees Celsius, the sweet spot for perfect carbon absorption. Carbon was the secret ingredient that distinguished ordinary iron from steel. Too little and the blade would bend and strain. Too much and it would become hard but shatter easily. The Vikings nailed this balance perfectly, all by eye and experience. No modern spectroscopy, just the fiery color of molten metal as an indicator. Imagine cooking steak at just the right temperature, except the heat changes the structure of metal atoms. By timing the heat and hammering cycles, they controlled carbon content to around 0.6 to 0.8%, the ideal range for a weapon that was both sharp and resilient. This mastery was effectively nature's version of Gore-Tex, breathable, adaptable, and protective. Each Viking strike was a lesson in combining nature's raw materials and their own unique artistry. But what about the wooden handles? It's easy to overlook them, but anyone who's wielded an axe knows the handles just as critical as the blade. The Vikings harvested ash and oak, the perfect woods known for shock absorption and flexible strength. Picture an ancient version of modern carbon fiber composites, where grain orientation and natural fibers work together like miniature suspension systems inside the wood. Handles had to balance weight and flexibility, to survive wild swings without breaking or causing deadly kickback to the warrior's snowy fingers. To protect against the brutal Scandinavian weather, biting cold, salt spray from the sea, and rain, the handles were wrapped tightly in leather strips soaked with animal fats and oils. This treatment worked like ancient hot water bottles or modern water repellents, sealing the wood against moisture, preventing rot, and ensuring the grip stayed firm even when hands were frozen stiff. This wasn't just craftsmanship, it was survival engineering forged by necessity. You might be wondering, how do we even know all this? Well, modern archaeontologists and material scientists have been testing Viking bloomery methods in labs using X-rays, electron microscopes, and chemical analysis to decode vaults buried under centuries of sand and ash. When researchers replicate the smelting, they find that the unique volcanic beach sands did two critical things. They provided trace elements like titanium and vanadium, natural microalloying agents that made Viking iron tougher, and their impurities balanced the slag chemistry to improve carbon retention. This meant that Viking bloomery iron contained about 1.2 to 1.5% carbon with beneficial minor elements, qualities that give their axes a surprising combination of hardness and flexibility, unmatched by other medieval weapons forged elsewhere. It's like discovering a lost recipe that blends science and art, unlocking material secrets hidden under waves crashing on ancient shores. And those discoveries changed the narrative of Viking technology, once seen as primitive compared to Mediterranean or Asian steel producers. Instead, 
It turns out these northern warriors mastered a unique metallurgical niche shaped by environment, survival needs, and ingenuity. They didn't rely on imported ore. They turned what others left behind, the iron-rich beach sand, into a strategic advantage. Imagine turning the stuff you casually stroll across every summer into the weapons that carved out centuries of history and legend. Their smithing wasn't just trial and error. It was an intimate relationship with nature's chemistry, fire's fury, and the art of transformation. But forging was only part of the story. Vikings understood the life cycle of a warrior's axe. Weapons had to be maintained constantly, resharpened, reoiled, and repaired in the field. Bluing, a process of controlled rusting to make steel more corrosion resistant, was achieved by heating and quenching in oils or animal fats. This was ancient chemical warfare against rust and cold. Ensuring metals survived long campaigns exposed to salty sea spray and icy rain. The combination of bloomery smelting, pattern welding, handle crafting, and metallurgical treatments ensured the Viking axe wasn't just a crude weapon. It was a battle-hardened tool honed for the brutal reality of Viking raids and skirmishes. Now picture the battlefield, frozen earth cracking beneath feet, axes swinging in arcs that could cleave shields and helmets alike. The clang of steel ringing through frosty air, each weapon a testament to a blacksmith's fire, muscle, and heart. These axes weren't just tools of destruction. They were symbols of clan pride, survival, and the unbreakable bond between warrior and smith. Every strike carried the echo of beach sands transforming into lethal edge, a grace born of nature, willpower, and centuries-old wisdom. So, what does this ancient craft teach us today? Beyond the legends and myths, Viking blacksmithing reminds us how human innovation thrives under pressure, how environmental constraints nurture creativity rather than stifle it. They didn't just survive harsh climates and scarce resources. They thrived by using what others overlooked. Today's material scientists look back at Viking smiths with renewed respect, drawing inspiration from. A time when metallurgy was less about industrial kits and more about intimate conversations between earth, fire, and human hands. In many ways, the Vikings' relationship with beach sand wasn't just about crafting axes. It was about resilience, adaptation, and legacy. Every grain of sand smelted into steel was a promise to family, a pact to defend home, and a hope for the future etched in iron. Their survival wasn't just physical, it was cultural, carried in the rhythmic beat of hammer on anvil, the glow of molten metal, and the whisper of winds over Nordic shores. So next time you find yourself idly sifting through grains of sand at the beach, imagine that beneath your feet lies the raw, elemental beginning of a saga, where nature and human ingenuity collide in fire and metal. The Vikings didn't just face the cold or the enemy with brute force. They transformed the mundane, turning sand and stone into symbols of strength and survival. That's the true power of their craft, an ancient alchemy of earth and flame, with lessons still burning bright in our modern world. In the end, the story of Viking blacksmiths turning beach sand into battle axes is a story of human spirit, relentless creativity under fire, the triumph of skill over scarcity and the timeless drive to protect what matters most. Their axes weren't just tools of war. They were forged legacies, sharp enough to carve history and unbreakable enough to inspire generations. And that's the real magic, turning the simplest grains of sand into weapons that struck fear into enemies and shielded the future of a people who refused to surrender to nature's harshest trials.